Emily from Westside, um, and this is <laughs> and this is science class. When I was five, I gazed in wonder at the sky, and my uncle showed me how to look through a telescope. For months, I chattered about the beings above me. I could point them out by name. When I was six, I stared out the window of my mom's car, eager button nose pressed up against the glass. Hundreds of sandhill cranes flew and spun and danced in the fields. For months afterwards, I carried binoculars around my neck and identified every bird I saw. When I was 10, my mind devoured books faster than ever, earning the approving glances from my teacher. Approval on the playground was not as easy to find. I listened as boys chattered about jet engines and collected bug specimens. If I tried to join, I was met with cruel bewilderment. My friend asked me why I even tried. I didn't have anything in common with them anyway, did I? One day, a boy put a cicada skin on my back to flirt with me or frighten me. I'm not sure which. I cradled it in my hand, asking if he knew that the insect that once wore the skin had spent years concealed underground before emerging to begin a new life. He rolled his eyes at me, and for the first time, I was ashamed of my knowledge. When I was 12, the first grade I got below a 90% was in science class, and the boy who sat next to me who consistently confused there, there, and there told me, duh, girls can't do science. He thought it was because of my gender, but maybe it was because whenever I asked questions, my teacher would pat my arm and say, it's OK, sweetie. I know it can be hard to understand. <laughs> and now, as a 16-year-old girl in the most educationally formative years of my life, if someone asks me if I like science, I immediately respond, oh no, I'm not very good at it. But then I remember that it was in science class that I learned that sound waves never stop. The chords struck by Brahms and Shostakovich are still making their way through space, and the promises I spoke out loud still quaver in the deep sky. It was in science class that I learned that 90% of the elements that make up my body mass are created by the stars. I am the universe expressed as a girl for only a short while. It was in science class that I learned that the center of our galaxy smells like raspberries, that my body makes 300 billion new cells a day just to keep me alive. I learned that dung beetles use the Milky Way to navigate and that houseflies hum in the key of F, and that Souter Sea otters hold hands to keep from drifting away from each other while they sleep. It was in science class that I learned that the earth and the sky take care of each other, and I am here part of it all. So when they, at, when they tell me that it is OK if I don't understand, I will hear the words, but I will not take them to heart. I have spent years learning to think before I speak or raise my hand. I have learned to question myself and despise my own knowledge. But when I gaze at the stars, on a dark country night or witness the sudden miracle of the migration of a flock of blackbirds or when I see the old oak tree in my grandma's backyard stretching its limbs to the sky, I realize the universe is so much bigger than people who tell me I cannot understand. And I hear the galaxy whispering to me that I can. Thank you.